Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, so GraphQL is becoming more popular in the uh, mobile development world. Um, this video is going to show you how to create your own um, GraphQL, uh, basically like a backend database. Um, it's a good way to learn how to use GraphQL. Um, this goes well with my uh, tutorial on Apollo that's in the making, should be on YouTube within a you know, a few days after this video, but this is a good um, primer for dealing with that if you don't really have familiarity with GraphQL. Um, this should help you a lot, and we're going to use what we create here in the Apollo uh, iOS tutorial that I create. So, um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, uh, the first step, we're going to install the Graph cool CLI, the command line interface, with uh, Node Package Manager. And, and I wrote down here, um, if you guys aren't familiar with Node Package Manager, it's the NPM install type, type stuff uh, that you would use in your command line. And in order to install the Node Package Manager, you need to have Homebrew installed. So uh, if you don't have that, you can just Google, you know, installing Homebrew and installing npm. Homebrew is like a Mac version of CocoaPods. Like you, um, you know, it's it's installing libraries uh, onto your Mac. And npm is one that's very useful. So uh, you're probably going to use it in the future if you don't already have it on your machine. Uh, yeah, get it for this. It's worth it. Um, and there's really no way to do it without it. So. Uh, and then we're going to uh, initialize the GraphQL files, a uh, simple command with the uh, command line interface from GraphCool. Um, then we're going to configure the data model. Uh, we're going to deploy it. Again, easy easy task there. Um, and then we're going to do uh, CRUD operators in GraphQL's SDL language. Um, it's really, really easy, the, the language is. So, um, this may seem daunting if you're more like this isn't, there's no Swift in this tutorial. Um, but it's, if you're working with GraphQL, you need to know at least this much. Um, so, uh, so, and, and don't worry too much. Like the initialize, configuring, deploying is all really, really easy. I mean, I'd argue that all of this is pretty easy, but it's just, it's different from, what you normally do, so, you know, don't don't worry if you get a little overwhelmed. This, this stuff you'll uh, you'll get it. You just got to keep going at it. Now, um, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is install GraphCool here on the uh, in the command line. And that is a pretty simple command. It is uh, npm install g graph. Oh, I'm sorry, g graph cool and if you hit enter there it'll do a bunch of stuff um, you know terminal stuff like installing da 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 and um, so you should you know you'll have it I already have it installed so uh, let's just imagine that we have it installed now so let's clear this line and we're going to uh, create a project on the desktop just like a new folder see this I'm putting it on my desktop and um, we're just going to call it, oh, I've got a lot of screens open here, guys. Then we're just going to call this folder cool uh, and for graph cool or whatever. And then so we're going to CD into it. And now that we're here, we're going to graph cool in it like we're doing Cocoa Pods or something. And you'll see that it's created um, these files. If you open up Cool in the Finder, you'll see that it has these files. Um, and the next step we're going to do is do our data model. Now, um, the data model is located in types.graphql. Um, it's a uh, the the types of GraphQL. There, it's on their website, but a type is basically a class. Or a struct, and uh, if you're thinking about Swift, um, and you use like a model like this, 
And for for our example, we're just gonna like store somebody's name and their phone number. So uh, we're gonna say call it contact. And let's just delete all this. Pretty simple example here. Um, and with this contact, we want name, of course, string, uh, and their number, which is an int. Let's do 64. That should be able to store all the. And then we're going to do created at date date time and updated at date time. The cool thing with uh, with GraphQL and a lot of other you know server formats is that. Uh, created at and updated at are managed by once it sees that you created these it's going to add the timestamp and manage it itself which is pretty neat um, and ID is uh, of type ID and it's automatically generated so and it's unique and they know to not apply two random IDs to the same person um, that's what that's for and there you go you have the data model uh, it's pretty easy, so we want to save here. Oh, and and quick note, I use Adam. Uh, it's this the name of this um, this IDE, and I like it because uh, like it it's very flexible. So in order to get the syntax highlighting for GraphQL specific language, um, you can just go to Install under Preferences and search for GraphQL, and I'll show you which one I got just so you. Um, yeah, see, it's the one here with all the uh, downloads. That's the ones you usually want to go for, are the are the ones with a lot of downloads. So, yes, that's what we did. Um, so, yeah, from there, we're going to uh, deploy. And it's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, make sure this is saved. There's a little blue dot up here if it's not saved, but whatever. Save again. Um, I'm going to say graph cool deploy and here it's going to ask you to uh, log in if you don't have an account uh, it'll open up in the browser and allow you to make an account and then you can you know log in with your uh, with your terminal so um, I've already logged in so it won't do that for me but you you should uh, be able to make it happen um, and go us west to choose the target name just hit enter to automatically do production um, and then choose the service name cool uh, that it just automatically picks up the name from the folder and we've made it uh, oh okay that makes sense yeah I thought they all had int 64s so I don't know if a regular int will be able to hold a, uh, a large number like that but you know what we'll do it anyway there we go and so now we have this uh, that we want to use the simple API that's the one we're going to use for now so you can uh, you know save that in the notes or something like that um, you can actually go into your graph GraphCool console at uh, console.graphcool.com. So right now it's not working for me. So I want to. I'll try it one more time while we're you know sitting here. But um, yeah, see, it's been. It does that. It did it for like an hour and then timed out. So yeah, it's not working right now. But luckily we don't need that part. Um, and now we can just use the uh, something called a playground with uh, GraphQL in order to uh, add data, add you know, do all the CRUD operators, create, read, update, delete. Um, so let's let's do that real quick. And um, but so you've created a GraphQL server just like that on this website, um, and it's. And it, you can sync it up with your with your apps, and we'll find out in the next video how to do that. So here um, we're going to run GraphQL Playground. Let me bring that up 
here. Okay. So basically, uh, what we're going to do is, so there's queries and there's mutations. So a query is when you're reading the data. A mutation is when you delete, update, create data. So uh, just keep that in mind. Mutation is any change to the data. You can change some parts but not others. Uh, that's kind of the cool thing about GraphQL uh, and why companies are switching to it. But um, whatever. I, I go over that. I'm making a video of GraphQL versus REST APIs. I'll put that up here. This is the first one that's getting uploaded. So um, I'll, I'll copy back or uh, let's turn back, whatever. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I could spend all day on that, but I'll uh, circle back. That's it. I was about to Google it and it hit me. Um, you're welcome for not wasting like 30 seconds of your time sitting here thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> I paused the video for you guys. But, um, but anyway, um, here in the playground, uh, we have, let me just going to do a mutation first. Let's create our first piece of data. And uh, it automatically has create contact um, and delete contact, update contact, update or create contact, which you need the ID for. So it's nice to just like create one um, because then it'll randomize that ID for you. Now, uh, we want to, we don't want to do that. Uh, it's, I like spacing to be clean, so do it this way. Um, and the name is a string, so it's going to be in quotes. We're going to say Michael Miles. And then for the number, we're going to, this is my old phone number, by the way. So uh, if you want to call and bug the guy, I'm sure he gets calls and texts all the time. Like, hey, it's Micah. <laughs> but he hates me. Uh, Expect to type in found. Oh, yep, too big. That should work. All right. And uh, we want it to return the ID so that we have something to refer to. And there we go. You'll see that the syntax highlighter is pretty good for this. And we're going to hit play. And so that's telling us that it's basically done in this uh, SDL language. Um, it's like simple developer language, what a simple database language, something like that. Um, schema definition language, but to me it's simple definition language. <laughs> um, all right, so we've created one. How do we look them up? That is called a query. So we want to query, and we're going to say all contacts, and then we get to put what data we want out of the all contacts field. So that's the thing, and that's why it saves you sometimes on uh, queries, is because you only have to query certain things. Like if you just want the ID, it'll just pull up the IDs of all the users. But we want to go more in-depth on that, because we're going to be changing data. We want to track it. Uh, let's do name and number, just to be orderly. And uh, let's do our created at and updated at as well. Play, see what we get. Okay, so um, it didn't like the order I was in there, <laughs> but it's it. Uh, here's the ID, name, number, and updated create. You'll see that those were created for us, which is pretty sweet. Um, so now we're going to update the data, and in order to do that, it's pretty similar mutation update contact and. There. Don't want, yeah, there we go. ID, and it wants us to give it the right ID, so good thing we queried it back here. And let's change my number to That's my new number, but you don't know the area code. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little worried about putting my full number on the internet. Probably not a good idea. Uh, and we want it to, let's just return the ID. 
just to make sure everything is done. Okay, so it's updated. So when we go in here and query it, it should show up with the new number. And it does, and you'll see updated at has changed. Um, so how do we delete? You'll probably be able to figure this one out on your own. <laughs> uh, we're going to go mutation, delete contact, and ID. It's just the ID here, so like I'm going to keep it in this line. It, it doesn't really matter actually where you want to keep it, you know, it's personal preference, but um, you have, we have the ID there. And then we're going to return the name. Always wants a return, so do it that way. And so we've deleted the contact name Michael Miles. So when we go in here, run it again, all contacts, empty array. So uh, yeah, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this, uh, got some use out of it. Uh, this it goes well, like I said, when packaged with my Apollo iOS GraphQL tutorial. Uh, which is currently in the works. I kind of had to redo it because they're changing uh, things around. Things move so fast. Uh, the way that I learned was a little different from how it's implemented now, which is easier, of course. Like now it's easier. Um, and it's great. So I'm going to show you all how to do it in the most recent way. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout um, in the comments and on Twitter, Miles of Tweets. Uh, Shoot a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, consider subscribing so you can see the other videos that I post uh, related to this stuff. And um, oh, the uh, the links are below to uh, some good uh, documentation on GraphCool and Apollo. Uh, just if you want to read through and understand more in depth how this works. Uh, thanks and uh, take it easy.